Good evening, everyone. It being 5.30 and there being a, I'm just going to look to see the, the quorum myself, one, two, three, four. And there being a quorum of four of our six members of the board, I'll call this meeting to order. And I know before I give our overview introduction, I'll go ahead and ask the secretary tonight, that is uh, Jack Redman, to please call the roll. Thank you. Chairperson Carney? Present. Vice Chairperson Richards? Present. Commissioner Cancel? <clears throat> don't see yet. Commissioner Brooks? I do not see yet. Commissioner Jones? Here. <clears throat> here. And Commissioner Tarba? Yes, here. Thank you. So, um, and you have, just so you know, you have two people in the waiting room, Jack. Thank you. And Commissioner Cancel is joining right now. Then you can go ahead and add him to the roll, please. So stand with us. And um, Commissioner Cancel. Hello. Thank you. All accounted for. Thank you. Okay. So we do have a, a quorum here, and um, Commissioner Brooks is excused. And uh, so, yes, welcome. And I'm just opening the agenda again, folks. Sorry, got to move this over. And just so you know, we do have a few items on the agenda this evening. In addition to our regular items, <clears throat> we have a uh, resolution later on in the agenda, which is to uh, adopt the place setter. Uh, we will give further explanation for that. Um, and that is the place setter for the fiscal year 2025 federal budget. We also will have later in the, in the meeting a motion to authorize the chair to execute an amendment to the contract for financial assistance. And that will be explained when we get to that portion as well. And then finally, under new business, you will hear us uh, speaking about a motion to authorize the executive director to submit a corrective action plan to the department, which is the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities for an agreed upon procedures related to the fiscal year 2023 um, um, agreed upon procedures uh, communication. And so then in addition, th that's really the only business we have tonight. And then we'll start off as is our custom with our public comment, which includes first tenant comment, then any staff comment, and then of course any public comment that we have. So, um, Jack, if you don't mind, could you go ahead and begin that process, please, for the public? Thank you. I see a few folks who are here for the first time tonight, so I just want to remind everyone that um, to please include the development you live at and let us know your full name. Um, the first person I see on my list that appears to be a resident is CLC. Um, you have the ability to... Um, unmute, would you like to make a tenant comment this evening? Uh, one last time for CLC, I think you're a solo resident. Okay, I will go to the next person on my list, which is identified as KC. Casey's still working on her notes. Can you get someone before me, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, the next person on my list is Kia Oki. Yep. Uh, yeah, that would be me. <laughs> um, so what is this section for, this particular section? This is resident comment. So you have um, two minutes if you'd like to um, address the board with any um, comments. Um, and you yeah. can also pass if you'd like. 
Yeah, and I'm, I'm just going to give this a minute because I've been living in Hampshire Heights for 20 years, literally since 2004. And we had an inspection maybe a month and a half ago. Um, and the person came around and checked off all the things that needed to be fixed. And, you know, like my light in the bathroom, you know, my flooded basement that is still flooding, even though there's a trench now, but it's still, the leak itself hasn't been fixed. So I'm just wondering if there's any possibility that these things can get fixed at some point. And how do I reach out and find out who's supposed to, I mean, they told us that they were just going to take pictures and give it to housing and then they were going to come and fix everything. So nothing's fixed. I'm just wondering if that's ever going to happen because I haven't seen any maintenance in probably 20 years, if I'm being honest. Thank you for your comment. And we can't answer your questions right now during this period. Okay. I would ask you, and Jack, you took note of that. Can we be in touch with the resident services coordinator to be able to speak with um, <clears throat> Ms. Aoki and uh, answer her questions. Mm -hmm. And okay, okay so then you. uh, you're welcome. Okay, go uh, back to you, Jack, please. Thank you. The next person on my list that appears that they may be a resident is identified as Holly. Holly, you have the Ability to unmute yourself. Okay, you guys have to take over. Okay, not seeing Holly. And then I think um, GN may be a resident comment. Uh, GN, are you? Uh, yes, hello. My name is Gwen Debod, and I'm not actually living in any of the developments anymore. I'm just here to listen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then, um, Casey, are you ready yet? If not, I will go to Joella first. Uh, Joella, I see your hand raised for resident um, comment. I will go ahead and give the floor to you, and then we'll go back to Casey before we close this section. Uh, OK. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, at Wanto Salvo House. And, um, I want to, uh, uh, I have a really good things to say initially. I want to thank people for having the larger um, um, notices out. I'm just a little concerned. I, I have it all typed out because I want to make sure I'm getting everything correct here, but um, good, good work. Um, I have some concerns. One concern is about the high traffic in the Savo House parking lot, which is adjacent, a part of, a butt to the senior center. And so all morning people are walking in there, walking in here, some with ambulatory issues. And um, this week, uh, this month, this year, this month, I had a very frightening accident where I was almost, I think hit twice in the same seconds. One was um, from a car and I think it was a newly Lexus. I think because Con Street is having a lot of congested uh, traffic. Let me just read my notes because I wanna make sure I get it correctly. Uh, one morning, I was personally almost run over. The first drive of a woman in a dark green Lexus, newly modeled, didn't seem to stop after seeing me walk into my car. She kept on driving. I was able to get a very fuzzy photo of the car, and, and I did report it to the police. The senior center has many people walking from their, the parking lot uh, throughout the day for luncheons, activities, exercising, and events. Additionally, I'm concerned about the driving speed of all drivers, trucks and buses and et cetera, especially... NHA staff driving company vehicles in the parking lot. We we need to, there's no speed limit. We need to adhere, there's no speed bumps. It's not NASCAR. There was an issue, number two, there was an issue with speed bumps uh, before. And I, a court, I spoke with a former a Walter Savo Tenant Association president. And he seems to think that there are unopened boxes of these speed bumps in the basement of Savo. So I'd appreciate some clarity from NHA on this issue. And I just remember years ago, this may be five, six years ago, I think, hearing something about snow shoveling with the speed bumps that could be some impediments. I'm not quite sure. And I don't even know if they're in the uh, basement, but I would like some information. I think it's an important issue for NHA. And I'm also going to address this with the city of Northampton to investigate because um, Senior Center belongs to the city of Northampton. And um, again, as I said, there doesn't appear to be any speed limits for the building. Is there a speed limit on NHA properties, I have to ask? Um, and again, the considerable 
congested traffic in front of Conn Street, you know, going up to the roundabout. And it's naturally for drivers to uh, avert to the parking lot area to drive to an alternative direction. And I just briefly said something about the notices. I think they're well done. It's uh, a larger print, which is easier to read. Um, they used to be prominently displayed throughout the Salvo House building. On the large bulletin board down near the mailboxes on each floor, there's a plexiglass holder for, that's where signs and everything are, are held on both sides of the elevator on each floor. In the last three months, especially this month, there was no notice on the uh, board meeting uh, in the building. And then May, 20, May last year, the notice was placed in the enclosed plexiglass bulletin board, yet residents reported that they don't normally look over there. <laughs> And so it's like uh, they so they didn't see the notice. And maybe that's why only two people, two residents were available. Um, understandably, there's been some confusion in the past months with holidays and special board meetings. So um, but I think some consistency with the posting goes a long way, especially an email. I, I once saw an email responding from NHA responding to a, a tenant on another property who complained about uh, the uh, board meetings not posted on the bulletin. So and. Um, I also want to say we got some cute signs at uh, on the Salvo property and McDonald's, but there's a little confusion. Someone asked me, is it Salvo House or Salvo Apartments? Because we got a sign that says Salvo Apartments. And then as I went to McDonald's, I saw it say McDonald House. So eh, it's small, but uh, that's something that people are noticed. And uh, lastly, but very, very importantly, staff, especially administrative staff, should not engage or participate in gossip about tenants in front of or within earshot or sight of other tenants. This extends to former tenants, but extensively to resident board of commissioners. To do so is extremely inappropriate, unethical, unprofessional, improper, and possibly illegal. Thank you. And I'm gonna send you a copy of this so you can make sure you, in, in the records, if we can get that. Thank you. Thank you. The next individual, um, I believe, is our final resident who is on the Zoom and eligible is Casey. Um, hi, y'all, it's Casey. Um, Thanks for having me and Kia. Kia's a workmate, and we, which reminds me, we have a impartial scribe or secretary that takes our notes, and we keep meticulous records, and it really, really helps all of us. We can look and see what was discussed before. I'm having trouble finding y'all's records, what has been spoken of at the meetings and, you know, written down. But anyway, just wanted to mention that. Uh, I think, a, 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 you know, an objective person may be in order for this situation because things, I'm interested in seeing the written account of my A words, if, if possible. And yeah, the inspection thing was a bit uh, off-putting because they took a lot of notes, a lot of notes and said, oh, we'll get right on it. And I've spoken to the property manager and not a thing is happening yet. And I know it doesn't happen instantaneously, but instead of saying we're going to get right on it, say, give us time. We're working. I mean, be honest, for God's sakes. That's what gets us in trouble. It's, it's promising stuff that never delivers. Um, I'm a little concerned about the drug traffic in and out. It has increased since the Narcan boxes have gone up. Um, you can sit outside any time of day and watch deals happen. It's not safe for me, my dog. Is it safe for your grandchildren? It's just frightening, and it frightens a lot of people, and they, they're not going to speak up on it because they're a little fearful of everything, is my opinion. I don't know. But the word is balm. Safety and health is balm for your soul, not balm in the sense of ointment, like, for you know, make it quit hurting you, rub it on. It's the kind of thing that, you know, comfort, you have comfort and you feel soothed and, you know, you feel good. Balm makes you feel good. Um, there's a lot of meanings to the word balm, but I'm looking for the balm here because I would really, really enjoy feeling safe. I, the garden helps a lot, but not when there's dope deals going down right beside me. To me, that's a little scary. And I'm a pretty tough cookie. Y'all know that. So, um, and as far as the police reports, no one seems to have any idea how many times the police come here. I was told that we've got to ask, that y'all have to ask for the reports. I'm just curious to know how many times. 
do you know can it happen it's it's very frustrating to me as a resident and i guess that's it and please be in touch with all of us about send us copies of your notes send us the links to the meeting there's not that many residents here that want to attend and we have to go through all kind of rigmarole to get in so it would it would assist us and we'd appreciate it so i guess that's all for i can go on for you know days on on bomb but i want i'm gonna work on my c words for next meeting thank you thank you um and then there was one other phone number that came in that um ends in 4096 i think you might be a staff member um but if you are not will you kindly um unmute yourself i'll give you a second Um, Chairperson Carney, shall I go on to the next section, which is staff comment? Uh, you're muted, but I think you said yes. So yes, I please. And then when you're done with that, please go to public comment. I'm just Perfect. trying to avoid the noise of my barking dog. Thank That's you. Okay. Uh, giving it a second for staff comment does not appear. And then I will go on to public comment. It does not appear as if there is anyone from the public, but we'll do a final call. Is there anyone from the public who wants to unmute themselves? I don't know if I'm considered somebody of the public. Um, so technically you um, can speak under resident comment section um, because you are still a participant. Oh, so I, I should have spoken under the resident. I'm sure Chairperson Carney will Yes, please, to please, Ms. Nabai, would like to hear from you now. Sure. So recently, um, EOHLC came out with new PHNs and clarifications on, and uh, this is all part of the new housing bond bill and, and legislative changes that are happening. And I had received some misinformation right before I moved out about the definition of a student. And what I have always understood by looking at the regulations is that a student is a full-time student between the eight, ages of 18 and 23. However, this new information I got was inaccurate and not correct. Um, I was told that stu college students are not allowed to have income excluded. Um, at any time, and the only time that income is excluded is if they're taking part in a little Massachusetts program or something like that through Mass Rehab or whatever. But I do wanna clarify that the regulations state now that the age of a student is between the ages of 18 and 26, and, it, and, it, and, and the, the student um, income exclusion does apply for any student who is now part-time or full-time between the ages of 18 and 26. And um, it applies whether they're going to a training program or whether they're going to a two year or a four year. So I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Navard, for that information. And so the next item on our agenda is the executive director's report. And Director Leeper is out of this month on medical leave. So I'm going to hand that over to uh, Jack Redman, Senior Program Manager, who will give that report on behalf of the management team. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Chair Carney. Um, so our GPR this month was $231,282.95. We collected $210,204.65, which is a 91% collection rate. Delinquency at the end of the month was 119538 That is down $10,000 um, from the previous month. This month, we did not have any public housing certifications. We had 54 for Section 8, all of which were completed, leaving zero expired. Our family waiting list for state housing is up to 22,056 applicants. Our elderly disabled list sits at 5,611 of which 1,929 are elderly. Um, in May, we um, saw a lot of move outs from our public housing portfolio. We had a total of nine. We had two move out in section eight. 
We did have six public housing move-ins and four Section 8 move-ins. We currently have two um, public housing units on notice to vacate. To vacate. Our, at the end of the month, we had one apartment ready uh, and 10 unready based on the influx of move-outs, um, leaving 11 total vacant, all of which are currently pre-leased. Um, our maintenance team completed five um, apartment turnovers and four of which were complete rehabs, which included cabinets and flooring. Um, we received 227 work orders um, since our last board meeting. The previous month, there were 67 past due. We completed 187, leaving 40 incomplete. There were no um, executive director follow-up required from the last meeting. Um, updates and events for this month. Um, during the past month, the Northampton Public Health Department began visiting our elderly and disabled sites to provide blood pressure checks and meet our residents. This is a continued collaboration um, as part of a rotating schedule where they will have a presence at our community and we are grateful for their commitment and the ongoing health education that they will be providing. On June 7, 2024, EOHLC, also known as the state, um, officially promulgated um, changes to the 760 CMR, which is the regulations that oversee our state housing developments. A notice went out to all of our residents regarding the fact that their lease is changing and when that will be effective. Um, a few notable changes. Um, for the first time in 30 years, the state changed the heat allowance, which mainly affects our Hampshire Heights development uh, and those allowances which reduce residents' rent almost doubled from what they were when they were created 30 years ago. Um, one very, very exciting change for our local, ten our local tenant um, organizations. Um, the funding from the state has increased from $6 per unit to $25. And so when we come back to the board um, for when budget guidelines are released, um, we will include that increased amount for our existing landlord tenant organizations, as well as if um, any of our local tenant organizations um, establish in this time. Um, additionally, a representative from Duffy Willard came out last week to review um, proper fasteners to install speed humps that are currently in the basement at the Walter Salvo house. Our team is currently discussing how we can move forward to ensure that removal of these speed pumps um, are able to effectively occur based on snow removal requirements in the winter. Um, so ends the executive director's report for June. Thank you, Jack. Um, just so that members of the public know if they have questions at all about the information raised in the executive director report, Please don't hesitate to email. And at this point, uh, you can email um, Senior Program Manager Jack Redman. And uh, uh, same thing for commissioners who have questions regarding the details of their support. Please refer them to Jack Redman. And we'll move on to the next item, which is the approval of the May 2024 mi minutes. So before we have discussion on that, I'll ask if. I'll ask, please, is there a motion to approve? And I see the hand, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton, you have a motion to approve? No, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions? Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes, hi guys, thank you. Um, I see staff comments, there was two staff, uh, not staff, what am I, a resident. And one was a Salvo resident saying, this past week I saw a person outside in the parking lot and thought they were having a senior seizure. So I called the police and they took him away. I heard on the radio that there's a zombie-like drug around. Uh, firstly, um, they I didn't say that. They wasn't having a, senior, a seizure. And I don't know if it was a man or a woman. I said, I saw a person. And um, I said uh, about the drug, uh, it, I first saw someone who I think what happened? Can you see me? What happened? We heard you. Yes. I'm sorry. I need to unmute, I guess. Can you okay. not hear me? Yes. I just, everybody went black. What happened? Oh, you can't hear me. No, we're just sharing the screen. 
we're sharing the screen of the transcript so that we can make, oh, okay. make so that we can address your I think you're asking for an addition or a correction or a deletion. So uh, continue on. Sorry, I, I didn't know that you would be distracted by sharing the screen. Very but... easily. OK, thank you. Um, but that's not true. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I and I heard it on a radio. I, I don't have a radio. So um, and I, 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 you know, I just would like to get these things corrected because that's not what I said. And I'm, you know, I've seen like every month I'm <laughs> having some issues with the minute. And these are very, very important because these are documentations of the meeting. So I worry about that. And uh, I don't want to spend time going through this again. Uh, I just now, like today, I sent in my comments because I'm hoping to alleviate what is written and what I said, because it's very important because I don't have a radio and it, I don't know if it was a man or a woman. And I know they weren't having a seizure. I said, when I first saw someone in this building and I don't even know if that person was in this building, it didn't look like the resident. When I first saw someone else with what they call this uh, zombie-like, also known as Trank, which is a animal tranquilizer mixed with fentanyl and all kinds of stuff. I thought they were having a seizure. I saw a documentary of it and um, that's when I found out what it was. And I have also uh, spoken about this at the city commissioners, city council, and that it is available here in North in Northampton, nine to 12 months. But I just say that I appreciate the efforts and you got my quote very well, but just sometimes I'm seeing a lot of stuff that's not corrected. And particularly that I didn't say that. So, and I'd have to go back through my notes to go through it, but I sort of think when I'm speaking of it, I think in your transcript that it would be correct. And also I, the one McDonald resident, I thought it was a lot more than that. I can see you trying to condense it, but I that concerns me. And there's a lot of other stuff too. Um, it will take a lot more time to go through this. And I agree, I don't wanna be here at midnight. So I just, that's the reason why I'm gonna vote no on this because I'm concerned about this. And might I suggest for a discussion that we think about maybe an independent stenographer? Nobody knows so we can get this stuff corrected because this is vital records. So. Okay, so you don't have an addition, correction, or deletion. So is there anyone else with an addition, correction, or deletion? Can I clarify? I did, but I'm not going to put it into record. I'm just, I just you mentioned can offer what it now. You can offer it now or you cannot. So, no, well, I, yeah, it'll be, it'll be longer. I just would, uh. Okay. Yeah. So, so there being none right now, and I, I don't I see any be... others. Yeah. Casey, I'm sorry we can't take your comment right now. I'm sorry, but you can address that in public comment at the, I mean, sorry, in resident comment at the next meeting or send your questions to uh, Jack Redman. And there being no other offered additions, corrections, or deletions, I'll ask then the secretary to please call the roll. Chairperson Carney? Yes. Vice Chairperson Richards? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Brooks is excused. Commissioner Tarbutton? No. Commissioner Cancel? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that takes care of that item. And we have no unfinished business. And the first item under new business is the resolution for Sorry, I have to broaden my thing here. <clears throat> For the fe uh, fiscal year 2025 federal budget place setter, I'm going to turn it to Jack and Sharon to explain that for the public and then also for uh, uh, questions that any commissioners may have around this particular item. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm bringing the resolution 2024-05 um, in hopes that you guys will approve it. We do this every year. It simply is taking the federal budget of FY24 that everybody has already approved and place, place setting it for the FY25 until DHCD or ELOC um, approves it, um, approves their budget for us to use. Um, and if I can go ahead and read it, Chair, on what the resolution- Oh, please, please read the resolution so that we can- have it offered on the to for discussion on the floor, and then I'll open it for discussion. If you'd please read that, then I'll ask if there's a motion to approve from the floor. Okay, thank you. Uh, resolution 
authorizing the approval to submit a place setter uh, of the federal budget FY24, um, whereas the NHA wishes to submit a place setter for the federal FY25 budget. This is submitted to HUD to comply with the HUD guidelines on budget submission. This is then in place until the budget guidelines come out from DHCD for the state budgets, which will allow an official federal budget to be submitted. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority does hereby approve the rollover of the current approved FY24 federal budget to the FY25 until the new guidelines come out and the NHA has the approved FY25 from the state. Further, that the authority and the executive director in their name shall be authorized on and after the execution of said contract to do and perform on behalf of the authority all acts and things required of the authority to perform fully all the obligations of the contract amendment and be it resolved that this resolution shall take effect immediately. Thank you, uh, Chief Accounting Thank Officer you. Thank Kimball. You. <laughs> and uh, I'll ask then if there's somebody who will offer this resolution for approval on the floor. So moved. Is there a second, please? Second. Moved and seconded. Okay, so um, commissioners, it's open for discussion. Well, uh, the, the term place setters. Your button, please. Yeah, thank you for recognizing the term place setters. Uh, this was the budget that we discussed. Uh, yeah, I'm still not sure. I got some answers clearly from last time, last time that I'm not quite sure about it. Like, for example, you know, what's up, some of the operating things, what is going into some of the, you know, some of the tenants, what are they getting paid and which budget to come from. And I'm really concerned that a PR firm is not being part of that budget. So I'm not quite sure of that. I do appreciate it that it's being here, but um, I'm not comfortable with that. So I guess I should say that that's going to be my vote. Why I vote no on this. Thank you, Commissioner Carabutton. Commissioners? Any questions for um, Ms. Kimball or from uh, Jack Redman? And I'm just letting uh, Mr. Halberstadt in. Okay, there being no questions and no discussion on this item, I'll ask then the secretary to please call the roll. Chairperson Carney? Yes. Vice Chairperson Richards? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Brooks is excused. Commissioner Tarbutton? No. Commissioner Cancel? Yes. Thank you, commissioners. And then uh, that moves us, that motion carries. And we'll move to the next item, mm -hmm. which is the motion to authorize the chair to execute the Amendment 12 to the Contract for Financial Assistance. And I'm going to actually turn this over for explanation first and then ask if there is a motion to approve from the floor. And I think that this would also go to Ms. Kimball. Sharon? Hi. Thank yes, you. Yes, this is again, um, another contract that we do every single year that has to do with our capital improvement plan um, that gets approved. Um, so we're asking, we're doing a motion uh, to go ahead and authorize the chair to execute the amendment number 12 of this contract because it gets in the, the amendments increase every single year um, to the contract for the financial assistance 5001 in the amount of 617,011.94 for the formula funding award for FY2026. Thank you, Sharon. And so I'll ask then before we have discussion or questions for Sharon <clears throat> or Jack around this, is there a motion please to approve? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. And now commissioners. Yes, Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes. Um, only thing I want to say regarding that is that it's kind of like the minutes. I get so nervous when a little thing or when things aren't done correctly. I'm even more so nervous when it's with financial stuff. And until I can get that and be assured of that, that's one of the reasons that hinders my vote. My grandmother would say, if you want to impress me on the larger things, don't insult me on the smaller things. I mean, board, budget, I'd like to know more about it. So for that reason, I'll say no. And thank you. 
Thank you. And you don't have a specific question you'd like to ask that would help you be more informed? I said it. I said everything. Thanks. Okay. So is there anyone else with a question or some discussion regarding this amendment? Okay, seeing none, I'll ask the secretary to call the roll, please. For person Carney? Yes. Vice Chairperson Richards? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Brooks is excused. Commissioner Tarbutton? No. Commissioner Cancel? Yes. Thank you, commissioners. That motion carries. Um, that was four yay, four yay and one abstention. And no. oh, I'm sorry, one no, four yay and yes. one no. Thank <laughs> you. Four yay and one no. And so we move on to the next item, which is the motion, <clears throat> which would be to authorize the executive director to submit a corrective action plan to the, Depart to the Department of Executive Office of Housing and Li Livable Communities for the fiscal year 2023 agreed upon procedures on behalf of the board and I'll ask first to put that on the floor for discussion, and then I'll ask uh, for more clarification on that, please, from um, Jack and Sharon. And so is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Moved to approve, and is there a second, please? Second. Moved and seconded. So um, please, before we go to uh, questions and discussion, I'll ask uh, Jack and Sharon to um, go ahead and share their screen and explain this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so um, every year the um, EOHLC, the state, uh, requires us to have an agency audit um, that consists of um, a different audit firm this past year, it was Markham. Um, we have had them in the past as well. Um, and for the first time, um, we've actually had some exceptions. And so um, I wanna just um, kind of go over the report um, quickly with the board um, so folks can ask questions. There are 72 areas um, that are reviewed um, just on the state portion of the, the audit. Um, and for clarification sakes, there were zero exceptions on the federal side, uh, which is separate from this report. And so um, as we go through this report, um, you will see that on our general accounting, um, looking at our financial statements, uh, wages, all of these items that I have on the screen are showing as no exceptions. Um, tenant accounts receivable, tenant accounting, how we receive checks, how we enter them, how we put them into the state system, our wage reporting as it comes to payroll, paying employees, paying staff, um, all of our accounts payable. These are bills that we send out. Um, as you can see, there is no exceptions. Our inventory, um, same exact item, um, no exceptions. Um, there were a few areas that um, triggered what's called an exception. Um, and so um, the Carolina Gonzalez from the state is our housing management specialist, and um, she sent a, a notice out to the board members um, early last month. And so, or it could have been earlier this month, I apologize. Um, and I just want to clarify that um, there were three items that um, triggered these 17 exceptions. Um, one of them was that, um, that it overlaps into this section here. Um, there, the staff, um, including myself, Sharon, and Kara, who are responsible for updating or, or uploading the documents to the auditor, uh, failed to upload what's called the um, contract register, as well as um, one of the five selected vendor files, um, which overlap into this section here. Uh, and then as we continue on, we had no exceptions for our procurement that was over 50,000 uh, with the exception of the last item, which um, fell into that contract register that was, was missed in uploading. And then our MRVP program, there was a file selected uh, and that was not uploaded um, erroneously. So 
I want to go ahead and just share with the board the draft, <clears throat> um, the draft corrective action plan that has been reviewed with Carolina Gonzalez from the state. Um, so that we can go through it before we go through questions. Um, so the um, everyone can see my screen, correct? I see some heads nodding, thank you. Um, so uh, a few things. Um, so each of the 17 items that were noted because of the three items that were failed to be uploaded in time for this audit um, are reflected here. And so, the intended action that was discussed with the state is listed in this action column. Um, and then when we anticipate sending these items to the state so that they can remove the exception uh, is following our last, our next board meeting, which as you guys can see is July, anticipated for July 15th. And the reason for this is because um, this is a draft plan that um, you as a board are um, going to vote on this evening and then get submitted to the state. And so once that's submitted to the state, part of the requirement is ongoing monitoring from the board. And so the intention is that at each board meeting, we will keep this as a old business item and bring it before the board. And then we are required, um, unless the if the items are not closed out by EOHLC, um, to keep those on and report them on a quarterly basis to the state. Um, and so um, if there are any particular questions um, about the three items that we need to um, send to uh, HL, EOHLC, um, we can also go over that. But this is essentially the plan, the corrective action plan that Carolina Gonzalez, who's our housing management specialist, um, has um, received, who has given a, a sign-off on uh, in quotations because um, she can't approve it until the board has seen it. Uh, and then the final piece of clarification that I just want to make sure, um, in the notice to the board, it, it discussed this being our first strike because it's our first time um, having exceptions on the AUP. Um, once we have our next AUP, um, and we um, pass that AUP, which we anticipate with no exceptions, the strike actually goes away. And that's in the notice to the board. Um, if the board fails to submit a corrective action plan within 30 days, um, there is no, there is language in the notice that I'm going to just pull up really quick um, so that everyone can see it, um, that is still to be determined um, from the state, we have not heard back, but I just want to make sure um, after discussing um, that everyone, all of the um, members of the board are aware. Uh, give me one second, I'm pulling it up. Um, if, if the board fails to submit a corrective action plan within the 30 days, um, it could result in, and it, again, it says may result in the immediate designation and appointment of a chief financial officer. Um, so obviously um, we are asking that the board review this and, um, and make a recommendation to um, submit this as it meets the criteria that HLC has established. Thank you, Jack. <clears throat> So I want to turn it over to questions from the board and Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Yeah, I have a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind. Uh, I know that when we did our last board training, I think all of us did uh, from EOHLC, and there was the whole part about recruitment and all that and, you know, AUP and performance management review. I mean, I was trying to study that like uh, crazy because to me, I don't get, I don't feel like I get enough regarding the financial matters, but uh I saw these letters and I was uh, from, I think it was one on, I, want, I wanted to ask you a question. My first question is, is a no exception the same thing? Because in the training it said NF, meaning no fault. Is that the same language that they're talking about or is it interchangeable? It's it, it, I'm sorry, Chairperson Carney, am I able to go back and forth? If oh yes, please, please. Okay. I'll just yeah, let so, you answer. So, 
so no exception and no finding are interchangeable. I think that changed on the AUPs a few years ago, Sharon. It used yes. to be an F. And HUD on their reports with Markham say an F, no finding. So um, just to clarify. Okay, that was very helpful. And I'm telling you, uh, we got three letters, one dated uh, emails, May 3rd from, is her name Carolina or Carolina? What's what's the name? Carolina Gonzalez? The, yeah, uh, Carolina Gonzalez. And she she reverted the first one because she had a typo. Um, so it, it's only one letter. Um, there's not multiple letters. It doesn't okay. fault multiple housing authorities. It's just Northampton for our FY23 audit. Oh, it is. So it's not the Hampshire County Regional thing because the latest letter I got was June 3rd and it it looked like it was so so it's just northampton housing authority none of our satellite <laughs> management yeah. service correct okay. and that that's a that was another typo that was corrected okay i mean I, I understand thank you for that but when i got this letter i was quite concerned especially if they're going through training and a little time that i'm on here and then the times that i go through other workshops and stuff it was a little frightening it scared me um falling below and then struck I, it, it just, it was somewhat alarming. So I myself, because I don't know when we discuss stuff here other than the meetings we're going to be vote on it. I need to, I need to talk about this. I did call Markham and I did get some clarification because I was uh, kind of in panic mode here. Um, and they were clarifying on it. It did say that, you know, our supporting documents for, you know, vendors, what, 10 to, I, I, he said 10 to 50,000, I quoted and on the contract register that we didn't um, provide examples and uh, having the contract and the information and the biddings, I guess you got to have certain biddings if they didn't have that. And so there was a deficiency in that. And he didn't mention the MRVP not provided with files needed to do that testing. And I know it was not just one, it looked like it was 30 of them. And I think the most alarming form for, for me is, and I, you, you, you're moving, uh, it said something to the effect of due to staffing shortages and absences, we weren't correctly able to upload that information. And that just wasn't for one thing. I counted almost 30, but I could be wrong because, but that concerns me. That's my concern about going to all these different management services over here and over here, over there, because I'm seeing that on the lived in level, not having enough, uh, you know, uh, 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 staff, in the salvo, you know, revolving door people not being here. So I worry that something like this and typos happen. You see Carolina talked about it, but it's corrected within minutes. But when you have this and we're spreading ourselves thin all over the place, these are the things that get missed. And it's of concern because one of the reasons that is being promoted to go somewhere else is that EOHC says I'm, you know, pretty, we're exceptional, we do really good, but this isn't a good thing. Luckily the strike will be out, but it is cause for concern. And I think that just like I'm talking about the minutes, <laughs> we need to dot the I's and cross the T's because I remember, I think it was either the annual plan or ARP. I looked it over the whole weekend and it was like, we still had the stuff that was from the year before, the dates were wrong. I mean, this is concerning to me. And I'm not even a, a actuary or a financial person, but this stuff doesn't seem to make sense. And it either is pushed in before you hit a button, da, 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 da. I don't know what's going on. I appreciate eyes that are looking in this stuff. That kind of gives me a little reassurance, but the reassurance they gave me was a bit alarming. And I think that these are things that concern me greatly on this. And, uh, I'm happy in some ways that we're trying to correct this. But to me, these seems like baby mistakes. The person or somebody, we didn't have enough staff, staff and shortages, absences, we couldn't upload it. That's not really very reassuring. And that's what I meant, impress upon me on these larger things that we can handle this, because that seems like a small thing we should really be paying attention attention to. And this is not, I, I, I feel like every time I say something, people have to come at me. How dare I say these kind of things? But this is my fiduciary responsibility that's on this board. And as I'm going and learning more stuff, and I just uh, signed up for some more classes with the Office of Inspector, Inspector General, and they're having courses. So we can talk about procurement, procru uh, fraud awareness. Not that there's fraud here, but these are the things that are concerned. And I wish we had some considerable uh, time to go over this. I don't know, for example, who goes through this. I don't know if it's just a treasurer who deals with this. I know as a board, I've never seen the committee where we deal with this. 
And it's concerning that you say, here, I've done this, sign this. So that's all I have to say. And I don't know how to vote on these corrections because I'm not sure exactly what it is in some of these vendors we've been dealing with. And it concerns me. I know we had a tree person come and I looked at their record and some of them had some really bad reviews. So I don't know how this stuff goes and I'm not comfortable rubber stamping something that seems problematic and seems like it's quite of a bit of an easier cure if we Two people went over, you know, go look through that, proofread it. Is this right here? Is this, I, I don't know. But if you're stretched everywhere, it, this is bound to happen. And thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Commissioner Jones. Thank you. Um, yeah, this would seem to um, fall under day-to-day -day, um, operations of the authority. And I don't think it's up to the board um, to go through every single one of these to make sure that they're done year in and year out. That said, when I when I got the email communication about this, it seemed to me, um, I mean, my only real question would be a, just a more um, clarifying explanation of why this happened. Because when I read the the email traffic, it's not as if, a contract register didn't exist. <clears throat> it did. It's not as if um, a vendor list didn't exist. It was that these things were not communicated and uploaded um, when requested within the period of time. And so um, my question would be like, why? Um, and I just like some more clarification on that because this just looks like um, for whatever reason, the, bus, the the button wasn't pushed and the transmission wasn't done. Because if they would have had this um, material, we wouldn't be having this discussion right now. And um, that's that's really about it. I would just like to know um, why, and I, I am not worried about um, going forward. I just, because I, I can't recall having this situation happened in my time on the board where we had to submit an action plan. Thank you, Commissioner I'll leave Jones. It that. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. And before I turn to Jack or Sharon to answer that question, which is why, um, I want to go back to Commissioner Tarbutton just so you have a list of the questions from commissioners and then you'll be able to answer them all. Yes, Commissioner Tarbutton. Commissioner Tarbot, you're muted if you're speaking. I talk to myself very well. Sorry you guys missed that. But I, I do want to say, I do kind of echo a little bit of what the former speaker was saying about, I'm not quite sure if it was just, I forgot to send, send, or if that, if, it didn't say an oversight to do that. It says staff shortages, absences. It didn't say we forgot to hit the button like we normally do. And the thing is, I wonder if I would have gotten this information had they not, and according to the PHN, say, you make sure the board knows. And I know a lot of, you know, boards, is operations. I am interested in the procurement element, whether or not, you know, just for my own knowing here, and I've had lots of questions with this, and had it not been for some of these mistakes that I've seen on other things, it's a concern to me, like, you know, one, is we, I think it was our program, we had tenant participation. And it's like, really? Four? Is that considered tenant? Four? What did the grant require? So if it wasn't for these connection things and the fact that we're here and everywhere, I that's concerned me. And I must ask, because as I'm going through the uh, PHNs, it is saying that the LTOs must be uh, knowing about this and some of the solutions too. So I wonder, uh, it's unfortunate I don't see any people from LTO here, local tennis organization for those who don't know what that is, but I'm just wondering who's who's participating. Did I get to know about this because Christina Gonzalez sent this to me? Because I have been here before and if, ha if it hasn't happened, it would be nice if all of us board members knew this stuff, whether or not we, just for the sake of knowing, and uh, if it's like a few people who know that that doesn't make me feel comfortable. I just sat in on one board me a meeting where everybody rotates the chair that every two years. So everybody get a work and knowledge of what's going on. That way we can be better able to vote because 
what scares me is we're talking laws here, NGLC 121B, Section 226BD, you know, enacted by C235 of Acts uh, 2014. So that whole thing, and it just was also highlighted in one of the videos from the Office of uh, uh, Inspector General, we haven't had any problems. We didn't used to do this. That's not an excuse. We got to really... I know me as a board member feel like my oath is to know all these things. I'm not trying to impede on anybody else's work here. And I also would like, I do like staying in our lanes and I almost wish people wouldn't be in residence business like they are here. Not that it's not a concern, but I do like that. And I am calling out the alarm and I think we need to do better. We're either overextended or people aren't paying attention or they're not hitting a button, but this is a concern. This isn't a like slip or don't go. This is concerning. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. So just, Jack, so you know, the tally we're running is the question why, and the question expounded on further why from Commissioner Tarbutton, in addition, who was involved in the drafting of the corrective action plan, including to what extent are were our required LTO involvement in an AUP corrective action plan. Those are the two questions that I just heard. And before you go on to answer those, I know you're keeping a little tally, Commissioner Cancel also has some questions. Yes, Commissioner. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, actually, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton touched on what um, uh, what I wanted to uh, speak on uh, about um, how we can, um, you know, uh, inform the LTOs and involve the LTOs in um, any type of, you know, corrective action. Uh, uh, just as as much as we can involve the LTOs uh, in the um, um, in you know running the organization, particularly when it has to do with things that uh, will affect um, their day to day lives, um, I just want to sort of encourage us to um, uh, find ways to in, involve LTOs. Um, for instance, if if this was the only review we're doing, sort of going out of our way to reach out to the LTO uh, contacts and let them know on, on on our next monthly meeting, we're gonna have a discussion about this action plan and that. So that kind of stuff, even, even if it's not required by law. Um, and I say that particularly because we've actually been doing a little better with this stuff. So uh, I wanna, um, I wanna, appreciate uh, us for uh, having a lot more trans transparency uh, and clarity around uh, around these things. And the more we do that, I think the better off we are. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. Jack, you've got now the, <clears throat> the running tally of questions that I'm hoping that you and Sharon have taken note of. And before I, uh, are there any other questions so that, so that um, Jack and Sharon might uh, address each of those concerns brought up by Commissioners Tarbutton, Jones, and Cancel. Anyone else, Commissioner Richards, any concern or question that you'd like to ask before they? Well, yes. yeah, uh, I think that my concerns will probably be addressed, but it just seems like a big deal. I mean, I don't, I don't quite understand. I guess my question is why. <laughs> Thank you. So really, it seems like the overarching question is why. And then there are a couple of additional ones related to who is involved in submitting the <clears throat> approved upon procedures. Are tenants involved, the procedures for, meaning the accounting procedures, those things that typically it's mostly... Um, the chief accounting officer, and also those things that Jack said. So I'll ask you two, if you would, wouldn't mind, if you could, in an overarching way, address each of those concerns. And before I do, one more time, because I want to have this answer, I want to have your, you hear the answers from folks. I, and and I, I'd like you to just put out whatever questions you have now. Any additional questions, Commissioner Tarbutton? or to Commissioner Cancel, or Commissioner Jones, or Commissioner Richards, any additional questions? I guess I don't have a question, but I guess the person that I'd like to know more about on the board who may 
pro provide more clarification would be uh, uh, Treasurer uh, Jim Brooks. I wonder, did he, was it something on his part that was overlooked that he didn't know he was doing? I just feel like we're, his influence. Jim is, Brooks is a signer of checks, but this has nothing to do with accounts payables. Well, just, I, I, hold I on one sec, Sharon, Sharon, hold on one sec. I think that uh, Commissioner Tarbutton wants to finish her question regarding okay. whether you can answer to yeah. what extent, well, with, and, you, and you started to, but we just want to get all the questions there. Commissioner Tarbutton wants to know to what extent is Treasurer Commissioner Jim Brooks involved? No. Oh, go ahead then, um, you clarify. Yeah, let me please, thank you, uh, Commissioner, um, I mean, Chair. I just would like to get his feedback on this as well. He is the Treasurer. And I'd like to, I just want to get his feedback, what he knows about this, what has happened, what has been in the past. He's been here quite a while too. And I just, I feel a little inadequate to be talking about this without him. And also, you know, Executive Director Leeper, I know that she's been out, but it would be all of us involved, I would think. Thank you. Okay. And before I do that, I will point out that I'm sorry that Commissioner Brooks won't be able to answer that question for you. And we do, the only way that if we were going to postpone, if you're going to recommend postponing this, that we would have to schedule another meeting before the end, because this does need to be submitted to the state um, by the end of the, by the 30 days from receipt of the, of the document. What was that date, Jack? May, uh, the April 30th. Okay, so May 30th, May 30th, I'm sorry. May 30th, 30 days would be, um, yeah, would be um, June 30th. So, and I see uh, before we move on to your question, your, and when, then when ho hopefully you'll be able to address all of those questions and concerns. And there's one more. Go ahead, Commissioner Richards. Well, I just, I just wanted to say that um, I think what we're asked to approve is the corrective action plan not really why it happened. So that is a separate, seems like a separate discussion, but the corrective action plan needs to be submitted. And that's what we're actually approving today, if I'm correct. So Commissioner Richard, you are correct, but I will allow, especially if they have information to share with commissioners regarding those very uh, concerns and questions that they raised. So I'm going to go ahead and um, seeing no other concerns or questions raised. Okay, Jack and Sharon, there you go. Yeah, thank you. So um, first and foremost, I, I just want to make sure that the board understands the process. And so as an executive team, and for those that don't know, that consists of the director, Kara Leeper, myself, Jack Redman, and our Chief Financial Officer, Sharon Kimball, who's also here this evening. Uh, and when we get notification of the audit, uh, Markham, the firm that we used this past year for FY23, um, does all of their communication in a system that they've had built specifically for these audits. And so there are roughly, and Sharon, you could correct me if I'm completely wrong, but between seven and 800 documents that our team scans and uploads into this system. And so yes, the three individuals, the three individuals who upload those documents are myself, Sharon, and Kara. And what happens is we go back and forth with the auditors. Um, and our history is very strong on this, on this topic. So we've never had a AUP exception that we've brought to the board uh, because we haven't had that. And so this, this absolutely was an oversight um, by our team in one or the other thought that we already went through by the deadline uploading these items. And that's, you know, I, I don't have a different or a, a drawn out explanation for the board. This was an oversight. It is a learning experience for us as a team um, to triple, quadruple, whatever um, terminology you want to use to make sure. Uh, and what we talked about internally is making sure that mm -hmm. um, each of us individually will go through the laundry list of items and make sure versus handling our individual topics. Um, 
the AUP, just so the, the board is clear, um, is done at the same time as our federal audit. And it is only done by the auditors. It is a it is a process that's regulated by HUD and EOHLC. There isn't any LTO or resident involvement with the actual audit. Um, everything that I saw relating to a corrective action plan um, does not involve anyone but the board and the staff, as well as the housing management um, specialist and team. If there was any guidance or technical support that was needed. And so we've already spoken with Carolina Gonzalez. She's seen this um, plan of action. Um, she told us to move forward, bring it to the board. It meets what they're looking for. And these are items that will quickly be closed off after our next board meeting. Um, we needed the board to approve this plan in order to submit the documents and take the action necessary. And so uh, as much as I'd love to go into much more detail on this, um, we have the documentation ready to go. We are ready to submit this to close this so we can put the strike behind us. Um, on behalf of the executive team, uh, working with Kara, Sharon, and myself, um, we um, take these audits very serious. It is a reflection on the agency and the board, uh, and we will ensure that um, this isn't something that occurs in the future. I'd like to add to that as well. Um, I've worked with NHA for 14 years and never have had a bad audit. <laughs> so this audit is not a bad audit. What had happened is we are in a system that we've only been using. How long did this start in 2020, Jack? The inflow system? Yeah, right. It was when the pandemic developed. And as, yes. And as Jack said, there's so much information. We are we are we're having our staff scan for us, put it into a file, copy, um, because we create an audit file that Jack and I and Kara have access to. Um, obviously we have staff that it, who's responsible for, for what they're doing. Like my accounts payable person will scan. I'll, I'll give them a checklist if this is what the auditors want and scan all this information into a file. So it's just a lot of information. I, I'm not making excuses as Jack's not making excuses. Um, but overall we did do, we did not do a bad job. Um, and uh, hopefully you guys will sign off on this so we can, get it back to them. They can, you know, uh, let us go ahead and give them the files once you guys agree that this is a good action plan so they can close it out. And uh, I think the they were final also- item, Oh, I'm sorry. No, sure. I'm sorry. But... <laughs> um, involvement from Mr. Brooks. So yeah. Mr. Brooks, as Sharon started to go over, is the treasurer for the board and he receives the warrant and is the physical signer of of checks along with the executive director's signature. That is his role, uh, which is simply the the check process. Um, Sharon, I don't know if there's anything else you want to so, clarify. So yeah, that. I mean, his his role is to definitely, you know, looking at what we spent, what bills were spent, what we spent money on. But his, you know, his role is not at all part of our audit. The audit is after the fact. We are in, when, by the time we're audited for a year, we are midway into another fiscal year. Um, like in January, we're gonna start an, an, an audit for FY24 and we're gonna be in FY25. So the information auditors look for is like I said, um, you know, we keep, we box everything up for that fiscal year. And when they give us a list, which is huge of all the different areas of stuff they need, we get those records and we get them scanned. We get them into a file, which is able to go into the inflow system. It, it just truly was something that the three of us overlooked these three missing files that didn't get highlighted or didn't get checked off by one of us. Um, and they just need to be sent to them.
Thank you, Sharon. Thank You're you. You're welcome. I will point out that, as was noted, <clears throat> and in my conversations with Carolina, um, what's remarkable is that we've never had we've never had to deal with this in the past. Whereas those of you who did look through the communications and look through the state's <clears throat> AUP, um, um, will see that many, many, many housing authorities regularly, regularly go through this. And it is unfortunate that the state uses the terminology of strikes and whatnot. I find that that is alarming. It was part of the conversation I had with EOHLC. If it's any help at all, we should know that, you know, many, many home run hitters, Carl Yastrzemski, Roger Clemens, any of these Talk have had... Uh, just a lot let you I'm going to finish this I'm going to finish my remarks I'm sorry Commissioner Tarbun I'm sorry I just I wasn't sure where we were I'm sorry to interrupt I, I, I'm putting my thing on I just didn't know what we were okay. talking about well the point I was saying was that I yeah I, I was alarmed too when I read read this and when I spoke to Carolina she was like whoa, whoa, whoa. She, and she said these were her words this is no big deal was what she said to me so I'm just comforted by the fact that even though they use use alarming language like strikes, that many of our, you know, world famous home run hitters get strikes, get strikes all the time and they still hit them out of the park. So um, those were the questions that were answered by uh, Jack and Sharon. And I think if those questions are done, then we could move. Oh, no, uh, I'm sorry. Did you have another concern? Another thing you'd like to say, Commissioner Trevin? Okay, go ahead. Yes, please. I'd like to see if uh, Commissioner, because uh, I'm trying to gather some notes, if uh, Consell would like to go, I'd like to defer mine to him right quickly because I do want to point out something that I got from Markham. I got to find it. I'm sorry. What? I didn't, I didn't see your hand, Commissioner Cancel. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, actually, um, so uh, first of all, I want to thank Sharon and Jack for um, the explanations. Um, I'm really um, actually thankful that we have this learning opportunity. Um, I don't see it as a, um, uh, uh, a huge problem, but again, just the way that Jack mentioned earlier, I see it as a, um, a good learning opportunity. Um, but I do want to encourage, just because I know there's a lot of things that um, the uh, tenant organizations um, uh, don't necessarily get a preview to. I do want to. I do want to just publicly, you know, call on the LTOs to attend our meetings, so um, so they can be more involved in the process as well. Um, you know, the the folks that can and that represent each each organization, it's always good if you attend our meeting. So that way we're everybody's on the same page. We um and you if you have questions, you can come and bring them at the next meeting, um, etc. But um uh I'd like to uh you know move on and uh, go ahead and approve this. Uh, I have a question. That, we have back to Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh I just wanted to say that uh, I, I didn't speak to Carolina Gonzalez here, but I did speak to Markham and they they didn't seem to think that it's like a, I don't know what the word that you use, Chair, but he seemed to think it was very important. What his word was not unusual. So I just don't want us to think, to get comfortable with, um, uh, with the mistake. Cause I think that's why I love people who are financial that you can dot the I's and cross the T's. And my thing about when I'm saying like the uh, the uh, commissioner Brooks and the LTO and um, uh, is to include them. I didn't say we need the, their input and them to be in the room counting everything. I'm sort of what uh, commissioner uh, Consell uh, switches gets me saying is that make an effort to uh, include everyone. That's basically what I'm saying. And I I think that I know Salvo uh, LTO would have been here. It was a death in our building, so they're at a wake right now. But I'm just asking that I'd like to, I would have got, I would, I, I like everybody's input, but not to be a part of this. And I just don't want us to think that, oh, it happens all the time, you know. I mean, I know 
you know, kids to say it was only my first arrest, you know, not the sentence is the arrest, but, and, and then they say, let's try not to get to that. And I finally figured it out. I'm a little slow chair, the analogy with strikes. I, I went over my head. Sorry. So, but I do think this is a concern. And I'm saying, I think because we're outstretched, we're here and we're there and everywhere. So it's easy to make some kind of mistake like that. And I don't think it was like input when it's consistently saying staffing shortages and absences. It didn't seem like we overlooked this. We've never done that. It seemed like because of something, this happened. And I just would like for us, I recognize that and I and I think we need to pay attention to this. And if it wasn't for other little things like that, if this is isolation, this would happen. I do think that people do a great job, but I personally, I couldn't really tell from what I, from this angle, and I am a part of the management tenant divide. So I would like to kind of bridge those gaps. So anyway, I'm just voting no discussion. I don't want to keep anyone here to midnight. So I'm done with this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Points well taken, Commissioners Cancel, Commissioner Tarbutton. And I will point out that I did raise the question with EOHLC that just on the heels of their asking us to provide assistance to the Hatfield Housing Authority, just on the heels of that, that they would send this. And that seemed kind of counter. And uh, all I can say is uh, Carolina Gonzalez said to me, this has nothing to do that with that. I want your board to know we fully stand behind our recommendation of the Northampton Housing Authority, which is why we asked them in the first place and would continue to. Just an answer to my question that was just raised the same question I asked to EOHLC. I don't need a response to that. Thank you. So I do want people to know that if we do not approve this corrective action plan, then it moves on to the next stage of um, uh, needing to uh, have further state involvement. It's not what the state recommends. In fact, EOHLC recommends and advises this board to accept the corrective action plan that they have reviewed, they are happy with. So that being said, I'll go ahead and ask the secretary to please call the roll. Chairperson Carney? Yes. Vice Chairperson Richards? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Brooks is excused. Commissioner Tarbutton? No, for the reasons I outlined. Thank you. Commissioner Kinsell. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. That motion carries with five yes. I'm sorry, four yes and one no. And so I think, correct me if I'm wrong, is that is the last item on our agenda? It is. So I'll ask then if there is one final motion for us this evening. Motion to dismiss. Adjourn. So there is a motion made to adjourn. Is there a second? because I said it. <laughs> if somebody second. doesn't second, we're here all night. Second. Okay, moved and seconded, and we don't need a roll call. Those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, members of the public.